and welcome back to Cornerstone Youth's YouTube channel. I'm Sarah and I am so ready to start our new August series, Squad Up. Are you ready? Okay, let's jump right into it. Do you have a squad? Or let's put it this way, do you have a group of friends that you can count on? And is that group like the group from Friends maybe? Or are you guys more like The Office? Super funny, lots of jokes. Or maybe you're more like BTS, you guys dance together, sing together. Or maybe you're like Naruto, fighting together. That's what it's about, right? I remember this group from the show called Crash Landing on You. It's a super famous Korean drama, and essentially this plot is like, picture a South Korean woman parachuting and crashing into North Korean territory, and then picture a bunch of North Korean soldiers wanting to help her get back to South Korea. It's super awesome, super funny, super interesting. But what I liked most about it was seeing the group of soldiers really bond, be a family, help one another out, and love each other, and work together to solve problems. They were the most iconic squad. So the point is that everyone wants a squad. Everyone wants a group of friends that they can belong to, that they can love on, that they can build each other up in. And so you might feel this feeling, especially during the start of a new school year, or when you're a new kid, or maybe when you just feel alone and misunderstood. But I know someone who is willing to walk with you through these hard times, and also a community of people who want to welcome you into their circle, who are always there to love on you and support you. Can you guess who I'm talking about? I'm talking about the church. Story time! Welcome back, guys. I'm with a very special guest, Adriana Chong. Woo! All right, Adri, who are you? Um, I'm one of the small group leaders on Friday nights. Nice, nice. And so we are talking about how the church is really not a building, but it's people. It's the, the church, Christ's body. And so we are part of the church. And actually, AG is one of the m more important people in my story about how I got involved in Cornerstone. But let's first hear about how Adri came to Cornerstone. So how did you come to church? So I went to Cornerstone for the first time on Good Friday of 2016. So I actually found it online. I was looking for churches around my house once I came back home from residence from university. And then I went to service and I ended up praying with Pastor Jeremy, which I didn't know he was a pastor at that time, but he was um, at one of the prayer stations. And he said there were some young adults who were going to my school and I got plugged in with the young adults group and then I've been here ever since. Nice. Who, other than Pastor Jeremy, was there like another young adult, someone your age, who engaged you? Yeah, so I was introduced to Samia. Yeah, she, she told me to get this thing called WhatsApp and at the time I had no social media or, or I didn't have WhatsApp, but she's just like, oh, you should get it. And now I use it pretty much every day, so that's how I got connected. Amazing. Um, how I got connected was I went to church and I live pretty close to church so I just went in not knowing what to expect. Um, I got baptized just randomly out of the blue after not really being at church that long but I, there was just a part of church that I felt at home in and so yeah I got baptized and then I went to a service a Sunday service and this girl came up to me and she was like hey you're Sarah right? And I was like uh, Yes, and I totally forgot. I didn't know what your name was. I was just like, okay, hello. Um, and she and she said, uh, do you want to come to like lunch with us or like hang out with us? Because I think you guys are doing like frisbee or something after lunch. Mm. So she invited me to it, and I learned later on her name was Adriana. And honestly, when you go to a big new church, you get really scared because you're like, I don't know anyone. I, I don't know who to talk to. So having someone be like, hey, I know your name, and you're welcome to join us for whatever was really encouraging and it's why I came back was because I was like someone knows my name so yeah did you know that you were that first person for me no yeah not until today all right so so since being at Cornerstone how have you seen like your friendships at church grow how have you seen your squad grow so actually I think being in a community and having a squad was integral to my growth uh, in Christ as well just because I didn't know anyone because I was new to church in general. I actually became a follower of Christ uh, in my first year of university. So I didn't have any community necessarily growing up. And so when I came here, I was part of the young adults group. 
and I was able to meet some really awesome people who helped me grow my faith. I asked a lot of questions. Um, I was able to pray with people. Uh, you guys probably know who Nikki is. She is one of my best friends and we clicked and she helped me grow so much in my walk with God um, and coming to the Alex group and meeting other people and eventually Sarah being a definitely one of my best friends as well. Um, has definitely helped me uh, just through ups and downs because life is not all rainbows and butterflies. So mm -hmm. I've been through a lot of things over the last four or five years and having a community has really helped me continue to follow Christ even in the hard times. Nice. Such a pro. My gosh, the way that she delivered that, wow. All right, guys, that's the end of story time. So thanks, Adri, for coming and joining us. And hopefully you can have your own squad at church. And if you don't have one, look around you and see who you can join up with. And you guys can pursue God together. Let's go back in time. Did you know that the church didn't always used to exist? I know, crazy, right? But it was only established after Jesus' time on earth. And everyone was trying to figure out how to follow Jesus, but also how to get along with each other. So, the early church leaders helped Jesus' followers figure out how to live out their faith through writing letters of encouragement, of instruction, of advice, and they would send them out to different regions and cities. So today we're going to read the book of Ephesians, and these are letters to the Jesus followers in Ephesus, which was a huge city in the Roman Empire. And this letter was written by the Apostle Paul, who was one of the greatest evangelists ever. So we're going to study this book to see how it impacted and what it meant for Christians back then, and also what it means for us today. Okay, so we're gonna go through three different passages in Ephesians, okay? Are you ready? You got this. So the first one we're gonna read from is Ephesians 1, verses three to six. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So we see in this passage that God chose us to be his children. So we are the sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. Do you guys know the song, Sons and Daughters? The, we are the sons, we are the daughters of God. No matter where we go, we're close to the Father's heart. That song? So we sing it a lot at Cornerstone, but now when you sing it, you know the biblical references that it talks about. So when you sing that you are the son and daughter of God, believe it because it's true. And the next passage we're going to read from is from Ephesians 1, verses 13 to 14. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So Paul said that when we hear and believe the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, that we belong to Jesus, that we become part of God's family, and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's such good news, because even if you weren't born into a Christian family, even if you didn't grow up going to church, if you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you're part of God's family. The last passage is from Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 19a, 22 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. And then in 22, And God placed all things under his feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This last part of this passage in Ephesians 1 explains that when we join God's family through Jesus, we join a family of people who welcome and love us. We pray for each other. 
our faith grows together. In verses 17 and 18, Paul asked that the Ephesians would grow in the wisdom, knowledge, and power of God, and that they would do so together. And we become one body. In verses 22 to 23, Paul said that God's church is like a body and Jesus is the head of that body. And all parts of the body need to work together to get anything done. So if you've ever wanted to feel welcomed, like you belong, to have people care for you, support you, pray over you, a place where you can grow and your uniqueness is celebrated, there's the church. The thing that God made so that we can all grow as believers in Christ and also grow as a community together. And if you're already a part of God's family, then I have a question for you. Are you inviting anyone to our family? I have a challenge for you. This week, I dare you to invite at least one friend to watch our Cornerstone service live on Sunday at live.cornerstonechurch.ca. They go live on Sundays at 11 a.m. Or you can invite your friend to one of our Youth Fridays and invite them out to see if they can join in a Bible study or maybe when we play games or maybe later on in September when we have youth group again. God never wants you to feel alone or like you don't belong. And you don't have to. When it comes to following Jesus and when it comes to being part of the church, there's always a space for you in God's family. All right, guys, I hope that your August is off to a wonderful start, and I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Okay, guys, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!